Welcome to Bright Horizons. Good with, morning, everybody. Hola, with, with Deb and, and Jim. Happy Fantastic Friday. We're having a little bit of technology issues We're here. We're coming so to a little bit later than we had thought. Hopefully you, you can see us. <laughs> and of course, you know, There's it wouldn't be a Friday morning without that, right? <laughs> Hope you're all doing well this Friday morning. We missed you last week, but we're back as we said we would be. And boy, we have some birthdays. We do, starting with Maria, Maria, Maria. Maria Fresnada. Happy birthday, Maria. She all was here best. a few weeks ago for my birthday. That's so right. we love she to extend sure the was. happy birthday to Maria. Happy, happy birthday. Whatever you're doing, hope you're having fun, honey. And I always sing to her like the from the uh, song West from West Side Story. Yeah. Maria, 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 Maria. <laughs> so we wish her the best. Absolutely. Also, a dear best. friend of mine, Maureen Sullivan, is today. So Maureen, Maureen Sullivan, happy, happy birthday. birthday. And this past week, my lo longest standing friend from grade school, kindergarten. Oh, my. Jean Kosky had a birthday. So happy Jean, birthday, happy, Jean. Happy birthday. And Mary Feistel, she's a, a dear friend. Happy birthday Mary to Mary. Also, happy birthday. Debbie Evans, who owns the Culver's in Jupiter. It's a restaurant. Debbie Evans, happy One birthday. One of my favorite places. If you're in Jupiter, go to Culver's on Military Trail. Great place to eat. Delicious. Uh, they call it butter burgers if you like burgers. Oh, yeah, I got burgers. I'll tell you what, my the favorite burgers. And, and then I have sal delicious salads. Oh, I love those uh, salads. The garden fresco salad. Fresco. And then Marilyn Pierce's birthday was on the 7th. Happy, oh, happy birthday, birthday, Marilyn. Happy birthday, Marilyn. Lots of birthdays there. And Boy. Nancy Lubeck just down the street. Her Nancy birthday was Lubeck. June 7th. Happy birthday. Oh, and then mom. my little nephew, Timmy, Aww. eight years old. He's the one that called you Unc. Well, they all do. Yeah. They all do. So cute. Th this is that. Timmy lives in Philadelphia with my, dear, my beautiful uncle. niece, Christina. And he, his birthday was yesterday. So happy birthday, Timmy. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Happy, happy, birthday. happy birthday to all of them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. And many more. We love, we love celebrating birthdays. We do, we do. Mine went on of course, the whole month. It kept going after the 20th. Well, you know, it's funny because someone had said to me once, you know, when your birthday is, it doesn't matter if it's on the first, the middle of the month, the end of the month, celebrate all so month. the whole month. Because yeah. that's your birthday month, so it makes sense. So celebrate. Keep celebrating. <laughs> we love to celebrate, yes. We are talking about a subject Awareness that today. is very, very dear to all of our hearts. We, um, have to be aware so awareness we felt it'd be a great topic to discuss with all of you yes because we were especially with technology nowadays so many people are focused on right. their phone or something and they're not right. really being present no and, it's a true and when you're not present unfortunate things can happen yes. so we wanted to highlight because deb had an experience the other day yeah and it, it made us think yeah. awareness is so important do you yeah. want to relate a little bit about well i was over to market and um as i was ready to leave um, out of nowhere came this uh, young man who was uh, pretty vulgar and said a couple of choice words that were not very nice and pretty much threatened. And you think he was on drugs, right? Uh, it seemed to be that way. Yeah. It seemed to be that way. And I had my wand in my hand and I looked at the owner and uh, he was making accusations that uh, he didn't want to hurt anybody, that he just wanted money. And I thought, oh boy, you know, right. I don't know what to think. And I thought, well, you know, just dear God, please, you know, let us all be safe. And uh, come to find out when I came back, I found out from the owner that he had made accusations that they would not be calling the police, otherwise he was going to do damage. Oh. So it could have been just talk, who knows. Right. But you know, it's it's a shame. It's really a shame. And it's, it's uh, I felt kind of bad, actually, for him because it's sad. You know, we had in May mental awareness. Yes. Know, and that, it is so critical. Mental health, yeah, mental it's a big health. issue now. Mental health is a huge issue. Always has been, but more so now. Well, you know, years ago, they, they had mental hospitals. Uh, but they don't yeah. do that anymore. They don't. They don't force people to stay in, in an institution. Yeah. In Florida, here we have the Baker Act, where right. if you if you allege Act. someone has a mental issue, they keep them for three days for observation. Right. But there's no way, uh, you know, to keep them longer if they want to leave, and there's no, no crime that was committed. Mm -hmm. So it makes it unfortunate that these people are there without getting any care. That's the biggest issue. That's very right, sad. And a number of the homeless people are having mental health issues. And that's a shame, too. You know, dry, I was discussing it with Jim the other day. Every corner, just about, when I'm driving home, and it's, it breaks my heart. And you know, they have their signs. And I think to myself, where were they before? You know, and right. where are they? Do they have family? Well, in, in, Palm Beach County, in Palm Beach County, we have the Homeless Coalition. Right. And it's a wonderful organization. They're actually building a facility 
on, in Lake Worth to house people temporarily. I've heard about that, yes. yes. And a dear friend of mine, Ted Paralakis, he's on the, the board of directors of that wonderful organization. Good for and, you. And I don't know Thanks. if I told you this story before, but I saw a, a homeless woman on the PJ Boulevard in US 1. Did I ever tell you yeah. that? Yeah. I would drive by each morning and I saw this woman there, and it was obviously she was homeless because she was there and she had a, a, a shopping cart. So, you see a lot of that, you, you yeah. know, but not, not from a store. She had the type that you pull around, that you bring to right. a store to fill right. up with bags. Right. And I would feel bad. I was going to get out and try to speak with her, but then the traffic would be, you know, Aww. not at a point where I could get out. So I called Ted and I said, is there any service that Homeless Coalition provides? And he, there was. They go out when you oh, call I them. See that? Yeah. They go out with a group of people to speak to the person. And then she wasn't there any longer, so hopefully they were able to provide oh, some support for her. Thing. Yeah. Because what I was hoping was that they would take her to their, one of their facilities, let her take a shower, and get her acclimated, then find out why is she homeless, and then try to get to the root of the situation, right. and then you know to provide care for her. So, I'm, I'm, I, it's wonderful that we have that homeless coalition. Yes, it most certainly is. But one of the things I wanted to mention is to be aware, especially women, because women are vulnerable with your handbags. When you're walking through parking lots, yeah. you don't want to be on your phone and not paying attention to oh, I, your surroundings. Oh, I can't. No, I see so much of that, and that irritates me. Yes. I mean, I because it's just too addicting. I mean, as we're always like this. In fact, I'm not trying to be funny here. It happens to be the God's honest truth. There was a woman, I'll take my phone and show you. And I was watching her. I'm in traffic and she's going like this. And she's going, I can see her and I'm watching what she's doing. She's literally just paying, she's so gross with whatever's on the phone right. that she was walking and she walked into the building. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I thought, that's yeah. ridiculous. I, I saw I'm that. to be that engrossed. I saw that I in mean, New York quite a, when I was in New York quite a bit about it. She literally walked smack into the building. I'm like, right. oh my God. It didn't surprise me. But. You know, before the pandemic, I was in yeah. New York and you would see people, a lot of people walking in the streets focused on Terror. their phone. I mean, you know, what is that? And, and they are hitting into people, and if you're going to cross the, the, the crosswalk, they're actually crossing the street looking at their phones. We weren't so, like that before the iPhones and the smartphones, yeah. so they say it came along. <laughs> but so. I did want to caution women that if you're shopping in a, in a mall and going out to the parking lot, you're vulnerable because they Absolutely. look for people that are yeah, not and you see a lot conscious of, of what, and they want to grab your handbag. Right. Or, the, or whatever you purchased, maybe, if you have shopping bags. So. You just always want to be careful, and it, it might be wise to be on a phone with someone you love, telling them, "I'm walking to the car. I'd like you to Smart be on this move. with me, yes. right? So right. that until you get safely into the right. car, so that they right. could call the police if God forbid this." Or an get issue. Uh, pepper spray, whatever you need to right. get. Uh, they right. had a, I was watching QVC the other day in HSN. I love those shows, and um, they had a wonderful gadget that you press and a siren would go off. Oh. I mean, they really yeah. got a lot that, of wonderful That's a good trinkets. public service announcement, Deb. Um, yeah. But no, it, it, it's very important. I no longer shop at the mall. I used to be years ago. I, I Everything's online with me. Right. I just... Uh, but it's funny because I was... Too much. In Jupiter, Indian Town Road, which is a busy thoroughfare. Very busy. And I left a restaurant, and I'm in the parking lot. This woman comes up to me, and she said, I just got off the bus from someplace, and I knew there was no bus that would have left her there, so I became suspicious right away. She wanted money, so I said, well, if you're hungry, I'll buy you something to eat, but I don't have any 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 coins or change to give you. And then she didn't want the food, you know. That happened to Greg a long time yeah, ago, same yeah. thing. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you're aware and you, and you use common sense, and I have, some, I call it street sense because I grew up in New York City, oh, yeah. and when you're from New York City, you develop a street sense about you, and you mm -hmm. can... You, you know, you, New York. You have radar. <laughs> That's right. That goes up. Yeah, you know, there's three different types of awareness. You have your peripheral awareness, the side, but you always see. Right. Peripheral, I should say, sensory awareness, and then you've got your self-awareness. Um, so, as you just said, that was a nice thing about women being careful because we do carry handbags. Right. I, I sometimes wear uh, the crossover bag. That's the best one, they say. And, and then you hold it close exactly. to your body. And I do that because it's... Yeah, because they, they, they'd rather look for another you. victim that they could right. just grab it and they run. They see you're wearing a cross. Right. Just any avenue to be extra cautious yeah. and extra safe is really important. So, how can we improve awareness? There's so many things, you know, we could, uh, I don't know, focus on one thing at a time, perhaps. Um, slow down, eat mindfully, give your mind a break, because you, you go home, you put the news on, 
and what do you see, right? Right. That's exactly what happens. Spend time in nature as opposed to spend time, watch the news, find out what's going on, be prepared, of course, and learn. But maybe spend some more time with nature, pick up that extra book, you know, get, a, get an awareness group of your own and have your friends, girlfriends, or families together, uh, siblings. Because um, I, I just feel like it's gotten worse. And it's, I was telling Jim what happened the other day, and I was flabbergasted. I was right. almost in tears when I was telling Jim because I told a couple of people, and you just never know. You could blink of an eye, boom. Well, I, I know this is a serious topic, but I, I, I wanted to inject a little bit of humor because I was thinking about in New York that, that game Three Card Monty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I haven't oh, seen what? it as prevalent in recent years when I was there because maybe the police are not Three allowing people to Monty do that. Every, oh my goodness! But there were people that would hang out around Times Square oh, and they'd that's set up so this little funny. cardboard, yeah, things, and they would either have three cards where you had to guess. They would show you where, let's say, the ace of spades is. And they have three the three card cards there, and yeah. then they're moving them around, and you have to place a bet to see and watch. You know, you're watching them with your eye where that, that ace of spades is going, and then you would guess. And obviously, the sleight of hand, they were able to trick you, and they would always win your money away from you. But the tourists were really gullible, right? They would play yeah. three card monte, or else. I'm they would have with that. they would have three <laughs> cups, right? Three. That's right. And they would have a little stone or a marble under one. Or like a tennis ball. Okay? Yeah. And they would show you that or, or a small ball. tennis ball, yeah. And they would show you the other two cups are empty and they're moving these cups around and you're watching the one that had the, the ball or whatever underneath it and then you point to that and it's not there. So they they get they get your money. <laughs> <laughs> that is cute. Every oh New York. <laughs> Nothing like growing up in New York City. And they were always oh, looking yeah. over their shoulder because the, the police were coming, they would have to just Fold up and run, you know, so run out of Three the card area. Three-card Monty. <laughs> did you ever have a, a lemonade stand? I, I love lemonade stands. No, I stands. never did that. Yeah, you did so that as a child? Oh, yeah. Where was it? it? Right in front of our apartment building. My girlfriends and I would get together, and you know who you are out there. Marianne and Kelly, Kate, all of you. Um, it was fun, and we felt like we were big shots. Yeah, and we were remember, making was money. It a, was it a nickel? How much was it It was five cents. Days? Five it cents. It was five cents for a little cup, a Dixie cup. Now lemonade. with inflation, it would be a dollar, I guess, right? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> inflation says it all, right? But, oh, it was just amazing that day. And we were right in front of the apartment building. We were safe back then. You know what's beautiful that's about that? That's we our hopscotch and all that other it stuff. It teaches you to be entrepreneurial. Yes. Because it, that's your little business, you know. And, oh, I, I we just thought yeah. we were it. And that was, you know, the name of the game. We are the now, lemonade. who made the stand. lemonade? Either my mom or one of the girls' moms. Okay. You know, that we took turns, you know, <laughs> and then it would be like my week, one week, my mother would control everything, and then maybe, you know, the girl's mother, and then we would just take turns. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yes. And if we made 50 cents, it was a big deal. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. You know, we split it. It was the know. camaraderie, being with your friends. Oh, it was wonderful. It was great. Offering some yeah, relief so on those hot days to the people exactly, walking by. Especially right. when Lemonade. summer's out, you know, school is gone for the summer, and you're out there with your girlfriend, you're playing, and... You know, your hopscotch and jump rope, and then you got your little lemonade stand. It'd be a really good stuff. Now, did you offer an oral popper also? No. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of iced tea oh, and lemonade. Gosh. Although, that would have been nice. Oral popper, my goodness. <laughs> lemonade. Nothing like a great glass of lemonade during the hot summer months, right? <laughs> it is, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I wonder when the Arnold Palmers actually came into existence. It was probably after we were young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You know. I'll research that and let you know when Arnold Palmers became vogue. <laughs> you know, speaking about awareness, Jim, I was thinking about, you know, people who will ask, you know, how would you raise awareness? Well, spread the word, which is what we're di right. discussing. Talking to you, you talk to me, you talk to other people in your life. Broadcast, you know, um, communicate, that's the biggest thing, really. And, uh, you know, inform people, circulate, tell people, do do your part, right. basically. And uh, make it known. And, and, you know, and you can raise awareness, not just talk about it, but you can do your, your funds, your yes. charity fund. I mean, so many things you can do um, to help volunteer, participate, it may right. be. Uh, research, recruit, what have you. So you many know, organizations. Wear it on your clothing. Get, yeah. get some t-shirts. That, that's done all the time, you so, know. So many Wristbands, organizations buttons. need volunteers. So volunteers, always encourage yes. people yeah. to do that. It's wonderful Yeah, I do feel bad for the uh, homeless. I see, so, I mean, we all, 
it's doing that every day, but uh, you know, if I were to get involved with the charity, that would be the one. Because I, you know, I don't think anyone in America should be homeless, yeah. period. I just think it's a chronic shame. And another thing you want to be aware of is c crimes of convenience, which usually is the car, okay? Yeah. A lot of people don't lock their cars. They feel they're in a safe area. Oh, no. they're, they're running out for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then they leave things in plain sight. Exactly. Which, you know, c creates the situation where, in fact, in Palm Beach Gardens, which is a safe area where I live, the police were warning people that the most common crime is, is stealing things from unlocked vehicles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because people just don't think it's going to happen. So we really encourage you to lock your, your cars and vehicles mm -hmm. and then and then don't keep anything on the right. seats that, that would cause someone to want to break into it. Even when you're stopping for gasoline, ladies, right. and, and you know, you men out there, everybody. Uh, if you it go happened in, to me a few months ago. If you go into the convenience ago, store. Yeah. yeah. I stopped, I always locked the door, I'm there, I pump my own gas, and here was a gentleman with a uh, shopping cart, and I could see what he was doing. He was trying to approach me, and I saw that he was approaching other people. But you don't know, I right. mean, you just don't know. Right. So just be aware, it's so important to be aware. Be aware of what's going on in front of you, behind you, you know, not be a nervous wreck over it. I mean, you have to live and not live in a bubble, but, you know, times have changed and we have to go with the flow. Yes, definitely. Go with it. Well, Marie Pinch. We never, ever end a show, you know. Out of my mind and into your heart. An essay with Marie. Our dear Marie Pinchman, and she, she's the artist. Look at the beautiful artwork that she created on the front of that. Yeah, I love that book. Well, we out of the over 300 about. essays that she has here. There's one that talks about making sense. Making sense. Okay. And these are thoughts of Marie, which I love. I wonder, can people become so bored with entertainment provided by movies, television, and sensational news coverage that they become immune to violence in any form? Is it a search from, for the moment of publicity, fame, or absence of hope for their own future? It is something lacking in the moral fibers of, of these destroyers. Yes, they are destroyers, not unlike warships at sea. Their entire experience in a time of war is to come upon the unsuspecting enemy and wipe them out. So it seems in peacetime also, who or what is commandeering these troubled souls? Are we all a little responsible? Have we allowed violence in our homes, theaters, and social media to numb us to the terrible pain experienced when there's a crime or act of hate bestowed upon our citizens? Have we too become too complacent? Mm -hmm. Are we too engrossed in our own little world to notice behaviors and symptoms of impending violence in our family members, friends, or acquaintances? Do we choose to overlook the warning signs or symptoms? Or are we just too busy to focus our attention on others who may be crying out for help? In some cases, love does seem to be blind, particularly the love we have for our children. Being human, we don't want to face an unnerving mm -hmm. possibility that our loved one is less than perfect. Do we overlook the pain or hurt in the eyes of a bank cashier or a carryout boy at the supermarket? Do we make an effort to be kind to that person or do we ignore him if he's a little bit indifferent? A slight smile or have a good day could be a signal to them that the world is not all bad, right. that most people are kind and caring. Thank you, Marie, this is beautiful insight. It really is, Marie. It could be enough to encourage our children or those outside our family to look at their world through a clean and polished lens and realize life isn't so bad after all. There is hope. Who knows? One act of kindness could lift the person out of their despair and into a world filled with hope and possibilities. It might even restore their capacity for love. I love it. That says Thank I you, Marie. Love Marie. And you know, we always, always depend upon her book because it, it did just get better. Yes, Each your every, wisdom. Your, your wisdom, wisdom is one, amazing Marie. and it stays in our hearts and souls. Let me tell you, I sometimes have to go back to the book and read her essays from time to time because they talk about making sense, they all make sense, Marie. And, there, and, and there's some poems so in here also, by the way. It's not just yes. essays, it's beautiful poetry. Absolutely fabulous. And, and the reason this book came into being, out of my mind and into your heart, friends of Marie said, you know, you should compile all the essays that you're hearing. Of you're course. Because she's been writing them for years. So we thank you for actually taking that step, Marie, compiling them, and now we have that. Love and it. we look forward to that every show because yes. it completes our topic, what we discuss, fits right into place. And, what and a we'll difference be a day joining makes. Maria again, of course. Yes. We have to set a time. What a difference a day makes. Yes. And, and with that being said, you know what that means. What, what a, a difference, difference a day, day makes. 24, 24 little hours. hours. 
But the sun and the flowers, where there used to be rain, what a difference a day makes, and the difference is you, and you, and you. You better believe you make a difference. You know what we feel about you. We want to be here every week and give you positive, positive thoughts. Encouragement. We Encouragement, love, lots of... Um, Focusing on your bright yeah, horizons that bright are ahead horizons. of you. Bright horizons, that's what it's all about. So if you're having a little off day, remember what Deb and Jim said. Always keep, keep your, your horizons, horizons bright. bright. No matter what. Until next week, guys, we love you. Mwah. Have a fantastic... And focus on our bright horizons. There you go. <laughs> every morning, day, every everybody. evening, there's a beautiful bright horizon.